solving radical equations and inequalities. So remember when we're asked to solve, then we should be left with a variable is equal to an actual number. So we're not just simplifying, we're finding a value for the variable. So we want to isolate the radical on one side. We may have to use powers to eliminate the radical. And then we definitely want to check our solution because sometimes the solution that works out doesn't check properly. So here's the first question. We want to isolate the radical. So in order to do that, we're going to add 1 to both sides. We're left with y minus 2 is equal to 6. Then to get rid of the radical, to eliminate it, we square it. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So we're left with y minus 2 is equal to 36. We add 2. So y is equal to 38. Then we want to check to make sure this works. So here's our check. We sub in the 38. We subtract 2. That gives us 36. We take the square root of it with 6. Minus 1 gives us 5. So it is a working solution. So we here, again, we want to isolate the radical, but we have a problem because we have a radical on both sides. There is a radical that's already isolated on the left-hand side, and because of that, we're just going to start by squaring both sides. So on the left-hand side, we'll be left with x minus 12, and on the right-hand side, this is the same as a binomial times a binomial. We need to FOIL. When we do that, 2 times 2 is going to give us 4. The inner is negative 2 square root of x. The outer is negative 2 square root of x. And the last is positive, because the negative times the negative. And a square root times a square root is just going to be x. So let me collect like terms. Now I'm going to isolate the radical, because now I have one radical left. So I'm going to bring the 4 over. I'll subtract 4 from each side, and I'll subtract the x. So my x's are going to cancel, and I'll be left with negative 16 is equal to negative 4 square root of x. Divide by negative 4, I get square root of x is equal to positive 4. And then I need to square both sides. So I'm left with 16 is equal to x. Now I need to do my check. So when I sub the 16 in, I have to sub it in two different places. I get square root of 4 on the left-hand side, which is equivalent to 2. On the right-hand side, I get 4. 2 minus that 4, so I have 2 is not equal to negative 2, so it does not check. So there is no real solution, meaning that there's no intersection between those two graphs. Now this one's a little bit different because it's not showing the radical, but remember we just learned in the last section that when we have an exponent of a third, that's equivalent to the cubed root, which is what we have. So we need to isolate the radical, or in this case, the rational. So we have 3y plus 1 is equal to negative 5, so we bring the negative 5 over. I forgot my rational. Then I'm going to cube each side, because what I have is that cubed root, so I need to cube each side. The power to a power, those multiply together, so we're left with 3y plus 1. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. And then I can simplify it, I'll subtract 1. So 3y, oops, I should have a negative here, is equal to negative 126. I divide by 3. 
So I get y is equal to negative 42. And then I'll need to check that. So in the interest of time, I've done the checking already, um, just so you don't have a really, really long video. So I sub in the y value as negative 42, multiply it by 3, add 1, take the cubed root, add the 5, and it works. So this is an actual solution. Same sort of process for inequalities. Um, just remember that we still need to check, and if we are dividing, we have to change the direction of the inequality. The first thing I'm going to do um, is that since the radicand of a square root must be greater than or equal to zero, first we want to solve that expression to be greater than or equal to zero to identify if we can each, if the inequality is even defined. So we take 3x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. 3x is greater than or equal to 6, and x is greater than or equal to 2. So this is defined, so we can proceed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 4. So we get 3. I'll take the square of each side. Add 6. So our graph, um, our answer is x is less than or equal to 5. And for it to be defined and exist, it has to be greater than or equal to 2. So our final answer is going to be between 2 and 5. That's our interval notation. Okay, so here is an example of our check. Test some x values to confirm the solution. Let f of x equal 3x minus 6 and the square root of that plus 4 because that was our answer once we brought everything uh, once we can bring everything to one side or sorry that's the left hand side so the next thing we want to do is check it we'll let f of x equal the left hand side of the original question and we can test values around 2 and 5 so just to look at a number line here's 2 here's 5 we want to test a value here, here, and here, because we've identified as our solution to be all values in between and including 2 and 5. So if we take 1, so x is equal to 1, and plug it into our equation, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 6, so we get an unreal number. So therefore, a number less than 2 doesn't work. If we take a number between 2 and 5, for example, 4, 12 minus 6, take the square root of it and uh, <clears throat> add 4, then the inequality is true because we're comparing it to the right-hand side of being 7. That was the original question. And a number greater than 5, such as 6, does not satisfy the equation either.